so in our previous video, what we did here is we decided to make this slideshow interactive. Right now, the slideshow is not interactive. It's basically just happening across the page here. Now, before we go any further, in addition to make this interactive, I'm going to undo what I just did in the previous video. So I want this to go back to the normal size because right now, it really doesn't matter what time frame this is because we're going to make this interactive. Now, in addition to making this interactive, I also want to make this responsive which means if I resize the size of my browser window for multiple devices, for iPad, for iPhone, for Galaxy, etc., etc., I want this to basically change the size of the page. Here's a very simple way we can do that. So I'm going to select the stage. In order to affect the stage, of course, we need to select the stage. Here's the property palette. We're going to change the width of this to percentages. I'm going to change that to percentage, and I'm going to change this to percentages. Make a change, save a change. Now, when you change this to percentage, what this does is this is basically, if I drag this, this is basically going to show me how much or how less of the stage I'm going to see. Now, I have my stage set the percentages, but I don't have the images set the percentages. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to select the first image, and we're going to change this to percentages as well. Now, here's a really strange thing that's going to happen. Right now, it's changed to 100%. So if I go ahead and launch this in a browser, which is command return, watch what's going to happen. It's going to take up the entire page, and that's not what I want to have happen. So let's correct that. Now, this is a formula that I came up with that works totally fine. We're going to change this. We're going to change that top one. Let's change that back again. So with it selected, so this is 100% by 100%. Make sure this is deselect. I want, don't want this to be proportional. I'm going to change this bottom one to 50%. So therefore, if I select this slider, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to change that percentages. Now, you should have done this to begin with, but again, it doesn't teach you what we're about to do, which is change these dynamic images. So we're going to change that to 50%, and I'm just selecting the slider right from here. I'm going to select this, make sure that's percentages, that's percentages. I'm going to change that to 50%. Simple, simple, simple. I select this one. I change that to percentages, and this to 50%. Okay, now it's going to look really kind of strange in here, but that's okay for now. Because now if you go to Command Return and I browse this, you'll see that it's going to basically look proportionally the same. Now keep in mind that this is automatically playing. So we want to add some dynamic interaction to that back inside of an Edge. So let's do that. Okay, so for those of you that are Flash users or ActionScript people or even a little bit of JavaScript, this is really, really simple. But 90% of doing an application like this is simply, simply understanding basic logic, deductive thinking. So what I have to have happen is when the playback head basically goes to the next slide right there, I want it to stop. Well, here's a very simple way to do that. I want to stop the playback head. I simply click right here, and I'm going to apply a stop action. So that's going to basically put a stop action. All I did was click right here. It put a stop action, and I'm going to close this window. Now, since I'm a lazy guy, I'm going to copy that command C, Control C for Windows. I'm going to go to the next slide and paste. I'm going to go to the next slide and paste. I'm going to go to the next slide and paste. So if I go ahead and play this, nothing's going to happen. It's only going to play up to the first slide. Okay. So here's a really, really smart, cool technique. Really simple to do. We're going to select the first slide, which is this slide right here. Now, we can't see that slide, so we can just move our playback head so we can basically be on the page. Okay, so I'm going to select that. Hold down the Control key with Macintosh, right click Windows, and I'm simply going to apply actions to this. And the actions that I want to apply to this is click, and when I click, what do I want to do? Well, very simply, I want to play. So, how cool is that? I just want to click and play. Simple, simple, simple. Okay, so what that did, that put an action right here. So I can take that same action and I can do the same thing to the rest of the slides. So I can take this, there's my information, I'm going to select this slide as well. I'm going to right click from here, control click Macintosh, right click Windows. Sorry, I meant to select the slide itself, my mistake on that. So let's select the slide itself, hold on the control key, again, uh, open actions, on click and play. Go to the next slide, physically select the slide itself, control right click Macintosh, control window, control Macintosh, right click Windows, on click 
And again, I want to play that. And we do the same thing for this slide, because this slide's gonna play it and go to stop. So I select this slide, control key, or right click Mac, control key, Macintosh, right click Windows, unclick, and I want to play. Now, in addition to that, here's what I want to do, make a change, save a change. Now, when I select these different slides, I want the hand tool to appear so the person knows that I need the clicks because if you get the hand tool, the finger tool, that's the universal sign for it, you know, do something. So I'm going to click right here where it says cursor, cursor, click, and I want to pick the finger tool. So now I have a finger tool and I command key return. So here's my first slide that's going to stop. Nothing's going to happen until the user interacts and clicks again. There's a second slide, clicks again. There's a third slide, say that five times fast. Click again, and there's the fourth slide. If I click again, it'll just round trip back to the first slide, the second slide, the third slide, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this is all well and good, but how does that help us to get this information into our ultimatum theme? So let's start doing that by basically modifying some of the code, because very important step here. What this did, this wrote all the code for us on our server. But if you want to basically talk from another application, meaning a WordPress application, then all the links to your scripts and all the links to your images, et cetera, et cetera, have to be an absolute path, which means they have to be the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash your, dot, your site dot com forward slash forward, whatever you're going to. Right now, the path is sets it relative, but we need to change everything to absolute, and we'll start doing that in our next video. Now, to make this simple, we're going to do this inside of Dreamweaver. You can use any editor you wish. I highly suggest you use Dreamweaver because Dreamweaver will FTP the files as well. So stay tuned.